This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. And it is the good news and bad news about taxes. And this is a four-part series. For all you people who love paying taxes, you can check out now. But if you hate paying taxes, this four-part series is just for you. Because as I think some of you suspect, or as former President Trump admitted in front of Hillary Clinton, I think in 2016, she says, well, you don't even pay taxes. And Trump says, that's because I'm smart. So if you want to be like Trump, stay tuned for this four-part series. You want to be Hillary, you can leave now. Because I don't know what she's up to, but she makes money the old-fashioned way. She, I won't say it. But they make it differently than Trump does. Because it's not tax, it's how you earn your money. Again, it's a four-part series. We're going to have one on entities, which are you know, corporations and how the rich use corporations to shield their money from taxes and from predators like lawsuits. Today's issue is about paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs and how the tax advantages play inside paper assets. We're gonna do one on real estate with Kenny and Tom Wheelwright. Why Trump, Kim and I don't pay taxes because we're real estate guys. I mean, there's a reason for being in real estate is because it's the biggest tax break you could ever get. And then the other one is gonna be, the fourth one is on gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And what are the tax advantages of gold, silver, and Bitcoin and how do you avoid making, paying taxes and still making millions of dollars? So today's program, oh, what do you want to say? Excuse me. <laughs> no, I you're just, doing just I fine. I get so excited you're about taxes. You're doing just fine. <laughs> I get so excited about you're taxes. you more excited than Tom Wilwright. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, no, this is, gonna be, this is a great series because I, you know, Taxes, you talk about misinformation. People have so much misinformation about taxes and they all say, oh, the rich should pay more in taxes and the poor should pay less in taxes and it has nothing to do with that. I mean, it's it's when you when you say, Robert, that, you know, Trump says I'm smart, it's because he's using the tax laws to his advantage. And there's the reason tax laws are and Tom's going to talk about this. They're just incentives to do what the government doesn't want to do. That's what it is. We're doing what the government doesn't want to do that needs to be done. It's very simple. So I'm glad we're doing this series. And I think there's a lot of good information that people need to hear about. And it's a four part series because the people that cheat most of the taxes aren't the rich. No, they don't have to. They don't. We don't cheat. <laughs> but the people that cheat are entrepreneur, I mean, uh, small business owners and employees because they got no escape. Pay, pay me cash under the table. Pay yeah, me cash pay under me the cash table. Pay me cash on the table, you know, and all yeah, this. All of that. They're the biggest tax cheats going around. So you don't have to be one if you're rich. You don't have to be one if you're not rich. <laughs> you don't have to be a cheat unless at you all like when you're cheating. paying taxes. Unless you're like Obama, Biden, and Clinton. They make money the old fashioned way called political favors. You know, I mean, I don't know what kind of tax that's called, but it's a tax on all of us, one way or the other. So Tom, um, so I guess you know, Tom is our resident expert on taxes. So t Tom, quick a, t a quick CV on what gives you the right to know more about taxes than and, Kim and I. And Tom Wheelwright is author of Tax Free Wealth. There Go ahead, Tom. Go. So um, thank you, Robert um, and Kim. So uh, first of all, I have my undergraduate degree, degree in accounting from the University of Utah. Um, go Utes, Andy. Um, I have my graduate degree in accounting specializing in tax from the University of Texas in Austin. I spent seven years with Ernst & Young, one of the largest accounting firms in the world, including three years in their national tax department in Washington, D.C. I spent 14 years as an adjunct professor in the Masters of Tax program at ASU, 25 years building, buying, selling CPA firms, and the last 15 years traveling the world with you guys and uh, everybody on this, uh, on this show uh, talking about taxes in every country. So that's the cool thing is that the tax law, as Kim, you say, is a series of incentives. It's not just a series of incentives in the US. It's a series of incentives in every country. Could I, could I just show quickly, because this is my new flip chart here. This is the cash flow quadrant book number two in the Rich Dad series. You have E, employee, S is small business, B is big business, and I is professional inside investor. Okay, an insider invests from the inside, everybody invests from the outside. 
So E is all of the way, where I'll pay about 40%. The S is the small entrepreneur pays about 60%. Big business pays about 20%. And the insider pays zero. And every place Tom and I went throughout, throughout the world, some idiot would argue with us, right, Tom? That idiot, they'd oh, actually argue with you. There was, every time somebody would come and say, this is great information, you know it doesn't work here, right? <laughs> it only works where you are. It doesn't work where we are. And they, they, and they say that in the U.S. Well, you can do that in Arizona, that in but Dallas, you can't do it in Texas. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter, where <laughs> matter if you're in Moscow. In, in Moscow, of course, they say, well, we pay whatever we want to pay because the law is just the suggestion there. <laughs> Here we actually, you know, feel obligated to pay the taxes. And uh, like you say, it's, it, it's really not Matt, whether you're rich or poor. It's really how much you understand about the tax law. Right. And then E's and S's are the biggest tax sheets going. Well, you know, and, I, are, I, and, and really, Robert, it's just because of a lack of education. So the, the E's are stuck. I mean, there's, you know, unless they go to, to, to S or I or B, they're stuck. But the S, they can get the same tax rate as the Bs. They just have to follow the rules of the Bs. Yeah. And the reason you know they're a tax cheat, they say we accept cash. Exactly. The moment you have that. <laughs> or, or even better, it's a 20% discount if you pay cash. Right? <laughs> right? Because they're escaping 40% tax to, and they're happy to give you a 20% discount. It is so funny. And then a lot of these guys, they want it under the table. Yep. Don't send me a 1099. Don't yeah. send me a 1099. Yeah. Sorry. And so, But they they go to church are good Christians, but they'll cheat the effing government. <laughs> this, this last guy, Kim and I had to run in with, we gave him a couple of things and then he got upset because he had to pay tax on it. I, I, but but we obey the law. He says, but I'm a good Christian. I said, yeah, but we obey the law. <laughs> anyway, okay, moving it's, on. <laughs> it's a psychotic subject. Anyway, with that, uh, Andy, give us an introduction. Yeah. Andy and Tanner. He's our, Randy Tanner is a rich dad advisor. He's the author of 401 Chaos and Stock Market Cash Flow. And one of the things I learned from Andy early, early on is that you can actually get cash flow out of the stock market. I never knew that. <laughs> Didn't know, Andy. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, thanks so much, guys. Uh, I, I'm only qualified to be here because uh, Tom is my accountant. <laughs> uh, I live vicariously through him. And had I gone to uh, uh, school with Tom, I probably would have been one of those cheats looking on his papers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this will be an exciting thing because a 401k plan is a tax to be poor when you're old. Uh, it's a plan to be poor because uh, a couple things are going to happen. Number one, uh, you're going to take investor risk, but pay employee taxes. That's very important because, you, you know, these guys that are investors are going to pay a lower rate of tax than employee because they're willing to take more risk as an investor. So they're going to get, they're going to take investor risk and, and pay employee taxes because that money's taxes employees, then it's invested and then when they pull it back out, they, they have to pay taxes. And then the, the, uh, the, the second thing I'll say, it's a, it's a plan to be poor because it, the, the, the lure or the attractiveness of it is, well, when you're old, you'll be poor and you'll be in a lower tax bracket. And so if you plan to be poor, uh, the 401k is for you. That's so, definitely not our, not our philosophy. So I'm excited for the discussion and you know, I'll, and, and, I'll, leave, I'll leave the advantages of a, of a Roth in the United States to a 401k to Tom to talk about. Or <laughs> but Andy, you could, somebody could actually lose money on their 401k and still have to pay taxes on it, right? Yeah, like as, as a gain. Yeah, I'll leave that. I just worry about uh, what companies best in. I say, Tom, fix the tax problem. Please. <laughs> so we'll leave that one to Tom. But it's great to be here. So thank you. Thanks, Andy. And now is a really good friend, a rich dad, is a fellow Hawaiian from Hawaii, a neighbor in Hawaii. John comes from the dark side because he and Nancy Pelosi are best friends. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But one of the reasons I say he comes from the dark side is we play rugby together and then I found out he's a financial planner and I couldn't talk to him anymore. <laughs> but he's, read, he's, he's come back from the dead, from the dark side. He now is, understands that He's going to share how his way of making money is not what the financial planners say. 
So John is the best because I listen to all these financial planner and shows pitch. I won't mention their names. I just call John and say, yes, we do it differently. We don't make money unless the uh, client makes money because we're fiduciary. And I called John up and I said, what do you think about that? He says, it's bullshit. They're lying to you. Because so the reason John understands the dark side is that's where he came from. And that's why he moved out of it. So I, <clears throat> what's the name of your book there, John? Thanks, Robert and Kim. It's great to be on the, on the show again. It's uh, the top 10 reasons the rich go broke. Because I listen to financial planners. <laughs> and, 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 and what I love about your book, John, is not for rich people necessarily. It's, oh, no, it's no, no, the no. lessons that people, why they went broke and why you don't have to go broke, no matter how much money you got, you have. Yeah, exactly, Kim. I mean, I've learned through you guys, you know, learning from people's successes is smart, but learning from people's mistakes is genius. <laughs> and um, and I think that's where people go wrong and they don't learn from their mistakes. And uh, that's what the book is all about. It's it's 10 stories of, of people that I knew that had everything and then lost it all. And to your point, one of the key stories is is I trusted my financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go well. That story did not did not did not end well. But um, and the way wait, wait, and, and the sad thing is this financial advisor is a stud in Hawaii. I mean, oh, yeah, he he's was. smart. He was until he hung himself. Wow. Literally, he hung himself when he got caught. So, yeah, it's a tragic story. And people just put all their faith in this advisor without any due diligence, any questions whatsoever. And it was just a horrible situation for the clients. You know, I learned yeah. that I learned that lesson very early on years and years and years ago um, when Robert and I were just starting out. And there was a stockbroker and he said, oh, you got to buy Coca-Cola. Got to buy Coca-Cola. And we're like, OK, we'll buy Coca-Cola. We didn't know much about stocks at all. And then I just had a gut feel that it's time to get out. And so I, um, I called him up. I said, we want to sell. Let, let's sell. No, don't sell. Don't sell. I'm like, yeah, we want to sell. Buy it a looks good. Price. Yeah. No, no, no. Hold. It's going to go higher. It's going to go higher. Well, of course it didn't. And we lost money. And uh, that I trusted his advice instead yeah. of trusting myself. More, more importantly than trusting myself, doing my homework and doing yeah. my, getting, my, getting educated. So, yeah. John, yeah. When this one, this one come, they advertise every night on Fox and they say, we're a fiduciary. We don't make money unless our clients do. Are they lying or telling the truth? Well, it's, it's a very hazy message. It's very <laughs> opaque in how they're describing that. Um, bottom line, it's total BS. There is, uh, <laughs> it's not surprising to me that you would be very familiar with the words haze and opaque, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get into the 401k discussion in a minute. <laughs> I got a new title for your second book. It's called Sorry, I Was Wrong. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, yeah, this idea that, that they do things differently and, uh, you know, we're fiduciaries, therefore we're holier than now. Couldn't be more dangerous information sharing to the client. I mean, um, this whole fiduciary thing is an absolute myth and it's misleading people to commit all their hard-earned money with somebody just because they're a fiduciary. It's what does that mean, a fiduciary? It means that they're, the financial advisor is held to a higher standard. They're working in their client's best interest versus a non-fiduciary who's working in, um, who's offering advice that's suitable. Now, certainly best interest sounds much better than suitable, but when you boil it down, all you're really talking about is your ability to, to sue the advisor Versus not. I could tell you, I could make a very strong argument that you are in much better and safer hands with a non fiduciary than you are a fiduciary. Oh. And I'm not saying one is bad or the other, it really depends on the advisor, but there is far more oversight and regulatory uh, compliance with a non fiduciary than there is a fiduciary. Anyone could open up their uh, an, an investment advisory firm and be, an, be a fiduciary. I mean, it, it's really that easy. And just to sum it up, Bernie Madoff, the biggest scandal in, I think, the history of the world was a fiduciary. Mm -hmm. So this term fiduciary is extreme. It's a marketing pitch by a lot of advisors, really. So, Tom, as, as an accountant, as a CPA and all this, um, let's go quick. If somebody is an employee, can you help them very much? Uh, not very much, a little bit. And we can actually in this area. And we'll, we'll talk about that, but not a whole lot. But this person here doesn't have to be a tax chief, do they? Correct. I mean, that person could easily be paying taxes at the rate of the B or the I um, with just a little bit of tax advice. And if, and if an employee started a part-time business, does that give them tax advantages? 
Oh my heavens. Uh, I mean, just consider during the pandemic, everybody's been working from home. And the question I always get is, well, I'm working from home. So I get to deduct my home office, right? Not if you're an employee, only if you have a business. So if you have that side hustle, you can deduct that, that uh, home office. But if you're just an employee, you get nothing. Before, before we go to break, Tom, <clears throat> I want to be very clear on this. You know, people say get a 401k. That's the appropriate vehicle for most people if they have no financial education. Would you agree with that? No, I agree. And, and there, there are cases, and we'll, we'll talk about this after the break, where a 401k, a certain type of 401k actually makes sense for stock investing from a tax standpoint. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay. So wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did, did I hear that correctly? <laughs> That's going, that, that, that video clip's going on my website. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't edit that down, John. Make sure it's a certain type for certain people as opposed to period. I didn't, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back from going more into the most important subject of your life. It's called taxes. And as we all know, it's going to go up because Biden is in charge. We'll be right back on how you can make more money and pay less taxes. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Mitchell Radio Show, the good news and bad news about taxes. Remember, this is a four-part series. One is about taxes and entities, another one is taxes and real estate, another one is taxes and paper assets, and the fourth one will be on taxes, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Because if you love paying taxes, you can check out now. But if you want to make more money and pay less taxes, this four-part program is just for you. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube, as long as we're not deplatformed. And you can listen to all of our podcasts on richdadradio.com because we archive it so you can listen to it again. When you listen to it again, repetition is how we learn best. Listen to it again, you'll pick up even more. But more importantly, if you have friends, family, and idiots you want to listen to this, you know, especially if they believe in job security and a 401k, this is their program, right? Any comments, Kim? Yeah, well, I, I like this series because we're talking about taxes in the four different asset classes, business, real estate, paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and commodities. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, gold, and silver. So a big subject uh, that most people have today is called a 401k. It's called an RRSP in Canada. It's called a superannuation in Australia. It's called a pension plan in the UK. And it's a 401k a, in Japan. And a 401k in Japan. So let's uh, dive into it. So 401ks, Tom and Andy and John, start the discussion. Well, so I'll let Andy talk about this, this piece because he, he loves talking about it. But Andy's right. The big tax disadvantage is that you, yeah, you get a deduction when the money goes in. That's the big tax advantage. That's, as, as I've heard Andy call it, that's the bait, right? The problem is, is that you're, you're not getting the tax advantages that you would have if you were outside a 401k. So outside a 401k, you pay capital gains tax rates in the US. Most countries have capital gains rates, which were about half of ordinary income tax rates. But if you invest in a 401k, when you pull that money out, it's taxed at ordinary income tax rates. So you take all the risk and pay double the tax. So can I ex explain some of the three basic taxes? Number one is ordinary. That's people who work for money. Two is passive, which is like uh, capital gains. And portfolio. Portfolio. And the third is passive, which is like, which, which I love, passive. Right. That's correct. Okay. Second There's three is, yeah. types of passes. No, that's correct. And they're taxed. And those are the three different levels. So ordinary is taxed at the high rates, 40 or 60, depending if you're E or S. Um, a portfolio is taxed at that 20%, which is why where Bs are taxed. And then passive is typically taxed at zero, which is where insiders are taxed. So Andy and John, you have a little bit of a different point of view. Um, Andy, go ahead and John, jump in anytime. Well, <laughs> Let uh, me hear this debate. It's well, I don't I mean 401k suck. If you want to look, you can listen to John or you can go look at your balance and you know <laughs> go look at the balance that you have right now and you think you're gonna retire on that. And, you know, I'm, I'm very, very serious about this. John and I kid each other and we align 99% of the time, but but the reality is just go look at your statement. Look, a pension is not, I'm no fan of pensions either, but a pension 
you know, if the company can survive and pay it, we'll last till you die. It's a bit of a golden goose. It's sick. It can't fly and it lays tiny eggs, but it, it is a golden goose till you die. 401k is a golden egg that you'll consume. It's an hourglass. And from a tax standpoint, um, I agree 100% with Tom. You know, you're gonna, they're, they're going to say, well, you're going to be in a tax bracket that's lower when you're older. Uh, it's an assumption of, of being poor. And, and the only way you're going to get a tax uh, that, is, that is lower is if you're in the, the bracket that is really, really low, which means you're not making any money. And, you know, that's, that's the way I feel about it. It's a, it's a plan to be poor, uh, not to be rich. And I think taxes will go up in the future, considering our fiscal situation. So, uh, you know, I just think I, I like the zero tax of the Roth is what I like is the zero tax of the Roth. Zero is better than a lot. Um, what do you think about the Roth IRA? It's a you know, if, if, if your investment strategy is paper assets, a Roth is ideal because while you don't get a deduction today, you never pay tax in the future. So a Roth is more for those who want to retire rich. OK, now the good news in like um, uh, Canada as an RSP, you have a lot more flexibility than we do in the U.S. OK, so an RSP, it's easier to get in and out. So that's a that's a little easier one. The RSP, you can time it better in a super. That's actually a really nice plan because you do actually end up in a lower tax bracket. So you, you do have to look at your specific country and you have to look at, again, the Roth 401k is fantastic. I mean, if I were trading stocks, I would be trading in a Roth. That's what I would be doing. Could I, could I jump in here just, just a moment? You know, if I'm listing and I hear, well, RSP, RSP and Canon Super and all these, you know, if you want to get a wide swath to understand this in your own country, wherever you live, is just take some time to study the difference between a defined plan and a contribution plan. And, and that's really a good way to, to look at it if, if you don't understand all those different names. Uh, am, I, am I taking a contribution I'm putting in or is my company just defining a benefit? And if you can understand that, you've taken a step towards, you yeah. know. Although, it- though Andy, really a, a, both a super and, a, and an RSP are defined contribution. They're not, they're, you know, they're not the pension plan the company's putting in. And even the pension in the UK, a lot of that is employee, um, the employees can make decisions. Okay, so they actually put money in. So um, you, it, you do have to look at your own country, but I think the principles are the same all over the world. Okay, it, you, you, the, a pension plan is designed for you to retire poor, A 401k is designed to retire poor. An RSP is designed to retire poor, whereas we want to retire rich. And so we want to take a different avenue. Right. And and, and that's why I wrote this book here. It's called Who Stole My Pension? Because it's a whole nother wild card sitting out there is because those of you with pensions, Wall Street might be putting their hands in it and taking out of there. I think the biggest question of all is this, because most people in their start out, they go to the company and say, you want a 401k. I mean, I was asked that and said, no. So John, would you, would What's you. What's your argument would, for the 401k, John? John, would you, John, yeah, if you this want, is, uh, John, I'm John, Rocky Balboa in the 10th wait, 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 John, John, Creek. John, 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 let me ask this real simple question. Let's say you start working for a company. They say, you want a 401k. Would you take it or not? In a heartbeat. You would. Why? Would you count, would you count on it? Would you count on it in 45 years? Uh, yeah, I would. And here's why. Um, and by you the way, out on a 401k? This, is, this is the argument. This is the debate here. Oh, let's hear the debate. The let line. me hear the argument Absolutely. for. Come on, let's hear the argument Absolutely. for. Go ahead, John. And, and, and here's why. So, um, and and you you mentioned your book, "Who Stole My Pension?" That's a perfect argument for a 401k. A pension sounds great. Yeah, work 35 years, work your tail off for us, and in the end, we're going to give you 80 percent of your salary. We'll hope to give you 80% of your salary for the rest of your life. Well, that all sounds great on paper, but look at what's going on today. And your book talks about it brilliantly with Ted Siddell. These pensions are way underfunded and they're being contested in court and they're winning against these employees. And these employees that have worked their entire life are seeing their pensions cut by 50%. I mean, just ask the iron workers in, in Philadelphia, I believe. I mean, they just saw their pensions cut. I think you had a guest on from UPS who lost, just seen a 50% reduction in his pension. So this idea that pensions are great, 
is, is just a ruse. And by the way, that pension income you're getting on a monthly basis is taxed at ordinary income rates, the tax rates. Tom can tell you that. And I agree with everybody. Taxes are not going down. They're going up given all this spending that's happened and will happen in the future. Taxes will have to go up. But I will tell you, if an employer is going to match my contribution for up to 4% or 6%, I'm definitely going to take that and contribute up to that then I would look at a Roth. Absolutely. I love Roths. The problem with Roths is that you're limited in how much you can contribute to a Roth. A Roth allows up to 7,000, Tom, or 8,000 now, whereas a 401k is up to 17,000. And here's the math. Here's why I, I and, and by the way, 401ks are not the be all end all by any stretch. But for most people that are employees and will be employees for the rest of their life, they are great because without a 401k today, you know what the retirement savings in America would be? Goose egg. There would be no retirement savings. The average balance in a 401k is 100,000, the median 70. The only reason it's not higher is because most people are not contributing to the 401k. And those that do contribute don't even invest that money. It sits in a money market, a cash account. But here's the math. You put $15,000 into a 401k or any retirement vehicle or any vehicle and earn 8% annually, you're looking at $1.8 million in 30 years. That's you just sound like math. a financial planner. But 8% annually? You sound like I a have, financial planner. <laughs> I have a financial planner. And I'm just doing the math. <laughs> Andy, I'd go rather ahead. have $1.8 million in my account than the whole- Wait, wait, that you're assuming an 8% return. Well, well, the average market, the market over time. Don't, don't give me this average bullshit. Ten percent. If you put Go ahead, in Andy, let me hear you. Over the last hundred years, you'd have an average return of ten percent. I'm using eight percent to be uh, considered. Let's use seven percent. Let me let me hear the counter, Andy. Go ahead. Well, if we want to talk about facts for a minute, <laughs> 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 look. If Robert holds up his chart, there's an ESBI, and. Uh, Pensions and 401ks are e-deals. So your choice is really what quadrant do I want to operate from? So I'm no fan of the pensions and I would never take a podium to debate for pensions because Rob, they, they're robbed from Wall Street. Uh, they're underfunded. The, the companies <laughs> often rate it. pension here. These are defined yeah, benefits. They suck. They suck. The, the, the debate is which sucks worse and the, the level of suckery uh, is very competitive between the two. Um, where I have a problem with the 1.8 million, you know, uh, dream world, you know, if we <laughs> if we want to stop smoking Colorado grade marijuana for a minute, just look at the facts. Look, just go to, just type in how America saves Vanguard. Just Google that, how America saves. Now there's, there's about, you know, 4 trillion in the United States in defined contribution programs and uh, Vanguard's got 1.4 trillion of that money. So that's a pretty decent sampling, 1.4 trillion. And if you look at, 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 at 2020, which is you know, 2019, the high, highest the market was, right? Big high market, best 10 year run, better than that average we talked about, right? Um, you'll find that people uh, between 55 and 65 got about 70 grand. That's a long way from 1.8 million. And what they'll do is they'll blame you. They'll say, well, you didn't save enough. You didn't put in enough. You didn't make enough contribution. Well, I'll just say this. The 401k is fundamentally flawed in that it was never designed. It's like trying to take a tricycle and fly to the moon. It was <laughs> never designed to get you to the moon. It wasn't, it, there was never a think tank of smart women and men that got together and said, what's a better way? Uh, you know, Conor Barber in New York want to do some favors for his buddies at Xerox and Kodak and get them a, a tax benefit. Uh, two years later, Ted Bennett says, oh my gosh, we can shed the responsibility of, of this from the corporations. Mutual Fund said, my gosh, we can have automatic payments coming in. It's called assets under management. We can have them on autopilot buying our products before they can get their freaking paycheck. And next thing you know, you got a, a destruction of, of any idea of investing and saving because, and the biggest freaking thing wrong with it, and this is what pisses me off the very most, is they're telling people they can be millionaires without financial education. 
And that's baloney. You, you do, I don't know. You find me one person who was a peasant and got rich for more form K and bring them on this program because they're not there. They're okay, not I'll bring there. them. I'll, I'll bring plenty of people on this program that have not made a million like, dollars in their well, yeah, if they make, if they're already I'll, making five hundred. All million kinds million. of people that are made. Look, I get it. The wait, 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 wait. Never designed to be the sole retirement vehicle. Bingo. Not even it close. Was designed, wait. but that's all we have. Pensions well, are yeah. disappearing. So what's the answer? Look, I'll Social concede. security doesn't work. There's you no say, argument there. Look, I'll concede. If you want to be an E, if you want to be- The only e. solution is universal basic no. income. That's what you're telling me. I'm waiting for a solution. I, I don't know the solution. You can say financial education all day no, long. No, no, no. That's- People look, know they need to eat better is, and diet, but they don't do wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, you guys. Wait, wait. wait. This is- this is not Peter Schiff versus uh, <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki. Okay, I mean the, the 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 point here is this: both John and Andy are in paper assets. Kim and I are not, and we kick ass without four hundred one ks, without IRAs. We don't have any of that true. garbage. Very true. And that's because we're on this side, and that's why this is a four part tax series. And Andy wrote the book Four Hundred One Chaos. Now, you know, so you're in, you're in, you're in paper, John's in paper, Kim and I are not. Tom, any comments on what, you know, because you're familiar with what Andy does and John does, how are they minimizing taxes? Well, yeah, so, so, so what, what John's doing is postponing taxes to a later year. So, you know, both John and Andy are right to a degree in that, in that you, it does it does presume that you're going to, re the way, only way you get a tax, a real tax benefit on a 401k is if you retire poor. There, I mean, I've run those numbers a hundred times. And now what we haven't discussed here is there's a very important word that we haven't brought up and that's the word qualified. And a 401k, a pension plan, these are all RRSP, super, they're all called qualified plans, which what you can do is substitute qualified for government run or government um, uh, government ruling plans, okay? So the government is deciding how you invest, how much you invest, when you invest, how much you can put in, John, you said it, how much you can put in, the government decides when you can take it out, how much money you can take out, when you have to take it out. The government decides everything about a qualified plan. What you guys do differently, Robert and Kim, is you don't invest in a qualified plan. You invest in a non-qualified plan. And non-qualified means I can do whatever I want. I can decide when I put the money in, how much money I put in, what I can invest in, what my tax consequences are. I can decide all of that and I can do it way better than a qualified plan. Yeah. So the, the point here, ladies and gentlemen, there's four asset classes. There's a business, there's real estate, there's paper. That's what John and, I, John and Andy are experts in. They do very well in there but they are qualified. I mean, they're pros at it. And the fourth are commodities, oil, gold, silver, Bitcoin. So Kim and I are in business, real estate, oil, so, uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin. Hey, can you explain Can you explain what Kim and I do, Tom, that's different than yeah, most people? Yeah. So, so really, I mean, if you look at it, first of all, you invest as insiders. Okay, and that's the most important thing is you're in the I quadrant. And I wanted to add that you can be in the I quadrant as a paper asset investor. You can right. be a stock trader in the I quadrant. And by the way, the tax benefits are phenomenal. You get capital gains and get to deduct all your expenses. It's so a I'll, tremendous place to be. So let in, me ask Tom, so, so Andy does cash flow on the stock market. You get, right. he, Trades options, things like that. Trades and options, so he so gets the yeah. he gets the inside he gets the insider rules. If you're a buy and hold person, you don't get the insider rules. It's the traders like Andy, the professional traders that are uh, particularly the option traders. They get even though they're trading every day, they get more than half their money is long term capital gain, which is at those lower rates. Even though you know you would think it would be ordinary because they're doing it on a regular basis. But it's the insider, the insiders have different rules in paper assets and you have to know what you're doing. You have to have the education. You don't do this casually, okay? But in the I quadrant, you can be a paper asset trader in the I quadrant and bring your taxes way down 
Okay. And you don't have to go to the 401k. John, you're absolutely right. If, if what you're doing is the buy and hold and, and your typical strategy, which most people do diversify, et cetera, 401ks can make all the sense in the world if that's where you are. Okay. And I think that's what I hear you saying, Robert, is that, you no. know, for most people that's fine and you get the match, et cetera. It's just that what we're talking about is, are there better ways? And what you guys do is way better, both from a tax standpoint and from a, a rate of return standpoint. So the whole point here is that John and Andy, John, how long have you been trading? Uh, probably going on three years now. I'm using oh, a very simple strategy that both Andy and I agree on. And by the way, I will fully, you know, I can't say enough about Andy's options course. Um, it's amazing. I use a very simple strategy. I look at it once a week and it's generating nice cash flow in my retirement accounts as, as my 90, 90, soon to be 91 year old dad is. So yeah, yeah. it can be, okay. anyone can do it. Let me say it again. There's four asset classes, businesses, real estate, paper, and commodities. And John and Andy are pros inside paper. Kim and I are not. Andy, final words. No, I, I think it's a great discussion. And I, you know, my number one, my life is about being an education advocate. Um, you know, people that want UBI, they're looking for a systemic solution. There isn't one. Uh, the ship's going to go down. It's going to sink. You can UBI all you want. That's just not, you just can't give people free money. My invitation to people would be, as an individual, what can you do? If the ship's sinking, are you going to wait for someone? Or are you going to, you're going to create your own lifeboat or try to find one? What are you going to do? And so I, I'm a huge advocate for financial education. So let me talk, but real, real simple question, Andy. You know, my concern being a non-paper guy, because I've taken, Kim and I have taken two companies public. Yeah. And we saw the inside of a paper market. I want them to do with it. But if the market crashes, can you still get rich? Yes. In fact, I would say the opportunities, much like real estate, it, they're, they're exciting when, when markets crash. There's, yeah. We could do a whole show on it. Yeah. John, will you make money when the markets crash? And it will Absolutely. Crash. There, are all, there are always opportunities to make money when the market crashes. Absolutely. Right. Will a 401k person make money when the market crashes? No. Their portfolio will go down as the market goes down. Absolutely. That's my concern. So final words, Tom, real quick on taxes, your favorite subject. You know, I, I mean, I love the discussion because it's all about education. And the more it, we, we only reduce our taxes when we get educated, we cannot, re, you know, to take the simple way out and say, well, I'm just going to put money into a 401k. That's ignoring reality that there are so many other options that you can take advantage of if you get the financial education. So that's what I would say is you have to get, like Andy says, you have to get the financial education. You have to understand how the tax law works. But when you do, you find out that it's not your only option to do a 401k. That's not your only option. There are lots of other options. Yeah. And I can say this for both John and Andy, John McGregor and Andy. Their courses are fantastic. You know, John's more than willing to share his formula, how he makes cash flow on a regular basis, how he, how he protects it from taxes and all this. But you have to invest your time and energy into the education. So I thank all of you guys. Thank you, you guys. guys. Fantastic. Great discussion. So I still, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still never going to have a 401k. You can't convince me. <laughs> so, but thank you. And we'll be right back for the final words. So thanks, you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the good news, Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. I want to thank you know, Andy Tanner, John McGregor, and um, Tom Wheelwright, Lively Destruction, uh, destruction. <laughs> Discussion <laughs> on Paper Assets. I mean, I just can't get my mind around Paper Assets. I mean, I know it's stupid. You know, Kim and I were offered Apple at 18 bucks, and I just turned it down on principle. You know, because I'd rather make money the old fashioned way. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. And we, I mean, we've taken the courses, we've done Andy's, you know, stock trading uh, options courses. And, and for me, I've, I've, I've taken several courses on option trading and it just doesn't fit me. Yeah. It doesn't fit my personality. Yeah. That's all. It's not, it's because for some people that like Andy, he's phenomenal at it and he makes yeah. a ton of money at it. And for some people it works really well, yeah. but you got to find that, that asset class that fits your style. I took three years of options trading in Cary, North Carolina, and it was a complete waste of money. Not because the course was bad, the course was fantastic. 
I'm just stupid when it comes to that stuff. Well, and my I, brain just doesn't think that way. I, I do remember at one course and the guy said, the instructor said, okay, so watch such and such. And when it gets to this point, that's the time. And like, I am glued to the screen all day long, waiting, <laughs> waiting for that one little thing to happen. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't, I have no life. Well, that's why John McGregor's <laughs> plan is probably the better plan. He's, he's happy to share it. They're great guys. Any comments there? No, I'm. that was a great show. I never expected taxes and paper assets to be so lively. Um, I will say, Kim, I agree with you. Andy, this was probably three years ago. We got together as a team here at Rich Dad. Andy walked us through one of his options courses. I got in three minutes, and I was like, I literally, this is a language I don't understand. But half the guys were totally yeah. into it. So yeah. it's Correct. really, like you said, it's really what what inspires you or interests you. Yeah. You know what I love too about this discussion, the debate between Andy and John was that it's a perfect, it's a perfect example of what we talk about three sides of the coin. So John had a point of view, Andy had a point of view and it's up to you, the li- to, and it's up to you to figure out what's, what works for you and find out, you know, the, the real information. Just don't take somebody's word for it. Really do your own homework. And a 401k is great, especially if you don't want to study. If you don't want to study, you don't want to do real estate, you don't want to do commodities, you don't want to do anything, 401k is perfect. But I would get 401k chaos because that does that did open my eyes as to all the fees that are taken out and how the system works. So yeah. that alone, if you do, if you have a 401k, you should at least get that book. Yeah, and just don't believe what they say. You know, it's yeah. You don't, the only way a 401k works from a tax perspective is let's say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year when you're working. It only works if, you, if your income goes down to 20000 a year, then you get a tax break. So there's more tax efficient vehicles than a 401k, but you have to do your research. We're not saying don't do it, but that's up to you. And, and isn't it silly when a financial advisor says, well, now that you're retired, you're going to be making a lot less money. And people go, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why is that okay? Why can you not be more creative and make more money? Once you leave your job, it's a what, good thing we is, didn't follow that advice, okay. man. <laughs> I like that was that was t- something Tom kept saying. Oh, they're designed for you to retire poor. Yes, that's sim- that's so simple. That's to- the problem with the four hundred one k. Yes, yeah. and people just ex- blindly accept that. And the other thing, when John says it goes up on average eight percent, I nearly wanted to vomit all over <laughs> this mic, you know, because <laughs> markets go up and markets come down. A four hundred one k, you know, I'm going. Don't buy it. But the thing I love about John, he is for real. I mean, he goes to listen to all, every time a financial planning show comes to his part of the world, he's in the audience and he pretends to be stupid. Not hard to do for John, no. But he he asks them questions to kind of set them up. I think the funniest one was with this one guy's up there, he's talking and all this, and he says, this is great, you know, I mean, he sounds good and all this. Then he finds out the guy's not even a financial planner. He's a Hollywood actor. And John sat there and goes, oh my God, he sells pizza, you know, <laughs> on television. <laughs> but I mean, so look, let the buyer beware. So this is a great program. I want to thank the three of them and all this. And it's an exciting time to be in uh, the financial education business. Final words there, Sarah? No, just great show. Looking forward to our next couple shows. We have one coming up with um, Tom and Ken and then the commodities show. Um, so look out for those. Right. Tax, taxes with real estate and then taxes with gold, silver, Bitcoin. We did one with Tom and Garrett taxes and asset protection using entities like S corporations, C corporations and LLCs. You got to know that if you don't want to pay taxes, you want to pay taxes, don't watch it. But the biggest one is coming up with uh, Kenny and uh, Tom, because Kenny, Tom, Kim, and I, the reason we pay zero taxes is the same Trump doesn't pay taxes. We're real estate guys. Thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Thank you.